Hello, my friends. Out of the terrible suffering and torment of his own life, Reb Nachman shouts, Lo lehitya esh, asur lehitya esh, rak esh. Do not despair. It is forbidden to despair. There is only to rejoice. Now, it's not for any of us to judge the response of another to her or his own suffering. There remains for all of us the challenge to believe it is possible that from the darkness of despair, we shall yet again see light. Hello, everybody. My name is David Paskin, and I'm here with my trusty friend and teacher, Rabbi Ellen Litwack. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Rabbi David. How are you? Fan, fan, I am fantastic. So I was, before we jumped on, I grabbed this book off my shelf, Living a Joyous Life, The True Spirit of Jewish Practice. And I just wanted to share a story with you from this book. It's, um, this is, uh, it's written by Rabbi David Aaron. So this is actually a story about him. He says, when I was in my 20s, I entered a yeshiva to get my rabbinical ordination. After several years, I felt that I would like to leave full-time learning and start teaching because there are so many Jews in the world that know so little about Judaism. I wanted to share what I had learned thus far, but I wasn't sure if it was the right thing to do just then. Perhaps it was too early. Perhaps I was not learned enough. I decided to ask a Torah scholar, Rabbi Joseph Shalom Eliashiv, for advice. Rabbi Eliashiv is considered to be one of the greatest Torah authorities of our generation, and I was a little nervous to meet him. I shared with him my dilemma and asked him, what does God want me to do? Rabbi Eliashiv turned to me and said, you have no responsibility right now to go out into the community. You're still young, therefore you should continue to sit and learn. Hearing that, I must have made a very contorted face because he asked, what's wrong? Spontaneously, I said, but I'm not happy sitting and learning anymore. I want to go out and teach. Why then are you asking questions, he demanded. I beg your pardon, I stammered. Why are you asking questions? Because I want to know what is it that God wants me to do. God wants you to be happy, of course. God wants you to be happy. Rabbi, is it true? Does God want us to be happy, to find joy? Well, God commands us to um, um, that we are supposed to be happy around our festivals. Uh, All right, but so, it's a regular day today. It's just Thursday. There's nothing going on. I mean... Well, I, I think we actually have to start somewhere different. I think this is, uh, this is a, a wonderful topic, but I need some help. I need to understand, is there a difference between happiness mm. and joy, mm. right? And I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I looked it up. I, I did a little preparation for our conversation today, right? And I, I don't know. Um, I'm, not, I'm not totally convinced or satisfied. Um, it seems that for some uh, that joy well, let's start with happiness. Happiness okay. is um, an outward expression of emotions, right? My smile is an expression of happiness. I am happy to be um, in this program and happy to be talking to you and happy to be teaching Torah, right? Joy, though, is seems to be a deeper inner feeling right so the question that you're asking of you know, is this does like, god it, want us is it is that like weather versus climate right whether it's kind of what's happening in the moment happiness is right. how i'm feeling in the moment whereas climate is the much bigger picture i like that i, I like that idea okay. um and and so the question of you're asking whether God can um, command us or wants us to be happy, right? If we think about it in terms of happiness, in terms of an expression of um, emotions, then yeah, I suppose uh, I could I could be commanded 
or I, I, God can expect me to be happy because I can do certain things. I can dance and I can sing um, as uh, outward expressions of emotion, of happiness. Right? But am I experiencing that deeper joy and I think, I think you're asking, or I think the question is, does God want us to be joyful in our lives? Okay. okay. Does God want, um, we can pursue happiness, all right? But ultimately, all right, does that mean that we are experiencing joy in our lives? Can, can I go back? Can, can I go back just for a second can. to the to to the dancing and singing? Right? You said you yeah. you you said that I, if God commands me to be happy, I can dance and sing. And that what the heck? What is this? Oh God! I'm sorry. This is that that was embarrassing. I apologize for that. Um, but maybe I mean maybe he's right. Right? Maybe dancing. But, you know, I can fake it. That is to right. say, just because I, I act a certain way, just because I, I, I smile, just because I have a smile on my face, that isn't necessarily, forget joy, even happiness. And one of the questions right. that I'm struggling with around joy and around happiness now is, you know, in a world that feels so full of despair, is fake it till you make it enough or does god want something more is there something deeper that we should be striving toward well i mean the the answer is that um you may not want to quote me on this um but one of the musar um teachers or one of the hasidic teachers said um that yes you actually have to fake it until uh um until you make it um, you have to you have to pursue. Um, I think it was actually Rabbi Nachman um, who says. Yeah, it was. Um, I, you, I actually have the quote here, or I mean, one of his quotes. Um, the one I have here is uh, what does he say? Oh, wait a second. Um, it, it's not a quote. Sorry, it's a. Um, just an idea. We fake a smile often enough, even trying to be light. Why not now? Try it. A smile, even a put on grin, is contagious. Not only will it make others happy when they return your smile, but a study show. This is definitely a, a teaching, not a quote. Smiling relieves tension and really does make your outlook on life a lot brighter. Right, right. So yeah, I, I think uh, look, I think that that is a tool. If we're going to ask, what is it that um, we need to do in order to experience um, happiness or even more so um, a deeper sense of joy, um, then one of those things is is going to be put yourself in a position um, to um, to do something that is happiness inducing. Be we silly. have to set Our ourselves up for trial. success. Yeah, we have okay. to set ourselves up for success if we're looking for joy. Mm -hmm. If we fight, if yeah, we're we if we're always looking for the the glass half empty, as it were, and not able to, and not really putting effort into finding the goodness, finding the light, finding the the joy, then how do we ever expect to find it? Yeah, and I think we would even go um, a, a step, um, right, that, that's, that's a pretty lofty goal. I, I'd say as we get older, we tend to become more cynical um, and we lose sight of the inner child. Most, most children yeah. um, are, are happy um, they're happy and they're joyful. And why is that? Um, because they get plugged into what, what's going on right there in, in front of them. Um, they don't get bogged down by what um, is going on all around um, the larger picture. They're not concerned about the terrible things that are going on around, uh, around the world because they can be joyful um, in the moment. Right, um, and I think staying in Sorry. in the moment it is itself a um, a tool 
uh, for experiencing happiness or uh, and experiencing joy. Right? We we take we need to take things one day at a time. Right? Difficult periods um, tend to be more manageable if we don't uh, overwhelm ourselves by worrying about the future or about the unknowns. Right? I I want to you you've talked a little bit thus far about how ourselves to find joy. Um, I find it much harder to work on myself than it is to work on anyone else. <laughs> that is to say, I'm, you know, trying to change myself, I find harder than trying to influence other people. So can, can we, let me ask you this, do we have a responsibility as Jews to help other people find joy? I know we have an obligation to you know, feed the hungry and, and visit the sick. But is do you have a sense that it's a value, it's a fundamental value in Judaism for us to not just feel it, but to spread it? Uh, look, happiness, um, Aristotle, Aristotle said that happiness is the um, ultimate goal to which all humans aim, right? And we've got the American Declaration of Independence that declares that um, among the inalienable rights of humankind are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, in Judaism, it's not necessarily so. Happiness is a high value. Um, ashray, the word for, uh, probably the closest word for happiness, all right, is is the very first word in the book of Psalms, right? We say the prayer called Ashrei um, three times a day, all right? But Ashrei is not um, a, a central value in, in the Hebrew Bible, right? Simcha, right, joy occurs uh, 10 times more than that, right? That's, so, that's a really interesting distinction, Ashrei versus Simcha. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm, even that, I'm not sure um, that it is, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that it's required um, of us to make others happy. Okay? Look. I, I teach our B'nai Mitzvah kids about tzedakah, right? And I remind them that tzedakah isn't charity, okay? Charity comes from the word caritas, which means making somebody happy. When I give you $100, you're supposed Wait, to be happy. Wait, it does? Happy. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's so interesting. Caritas. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't quote me. I think it's Greek, um, um, but it's about making somebody happy. When we give charity, um, we increase somebody's happiness. Um, but but that isn't that's not what Judaism says. Sadaka is about justice, about fairness. Sedek. Right. So when we give, we're trying to make the world fair. Does that make somebody happier? I suppose. Does it make somebody more joyful? I, I guess, um, ultimately. But that's not the, in, that's not the initial um, piece. That's an added right? benefit, added. but it's not the goal. Right, right. right. Where I think um, it's valuable, since you brought it up, is I do believe that um, caring for others brings us joy that that when we do things right that isn't that isn't necessarily the reason for us to do it we do it because god tells us to do it as a mitzvah right or because community expects it of us but there is the um the unintended consequence um that we feel joy right and, and if we think about joy, right, a deeper feeling, right, it is um, when we um, when we get out of ourselves, right, when we um, when we're happy or or as we say, samach uh, uh, that we are happy with our lot, right. 
I'm good with with what I have. I'm not worried about trying to keep up with uh, with the Joneses, but right, where we experience joy is when we work to help others, when we um, give others happiness and joy, we experience it ourselves. That's beautiful. So it's, it's, uh, it's very much a double-sided coin, but both sides are mm-hmm. heads. <laughs> Be- <Yeah>. right? it's, <laughs> it's mutually good. And yeah. mitzvah gar- Right. And it also reminds me of mitzvah gar- mitzvah. That, I right. mean, it's not really mitzvah. It's, it's really mitzvah gar- simcha, I guess. I guess. Right? Yeah. That when I do a mitzvah, it brings me, it brings me joy. Um, mm-hmm. Where, of course, the reason I want to talk about this is because I actually don't even have my calendar open right now. When is, do you happen to know when? Hey, it's Purim. Sh- well, yeah, Purim. But when is when is Rosh Chodesh Adar? I don't actually even remember. That's a terrible uh, I think it's. Uh, oh, it's tomorrow. It is it's tomorrow. Saturday. Yeah, it's tomorrow. Sorry, that's why we're talking uh, Saturday, about this today. Yeah, Friday, Saturday, I think. Yeah, yes, Misha Nichnas Adar Marbin Besimcha. Right, that whoever welcomes right. Adar with jo- uh, with with um, whoever welcomes Adar, period, is filled with joy because of Purim mm-hmm. in there. That's um, right. And and you know your so your connection between mitzvah between and tzedakah mitzvah you know doing for others is a source of bringing joy is of course making me think about um mishloch manot um the sending of gifts matanot levyonim um gifts for the poor right that that what do we do in addition to picking out on hamantash and what do we do on purim to celebrate our great joy we do for others yeah i think you're right so uh, uh, we're taught that um, um, in this month of Adar, um, especially on the holiday of Purim, uh, that we are supposed to, um, it's expected that we're twice as happy as we normally could uh, could be. Right? And it's not that, um, it's not because we expect that on Purim, uh, the world and our lives will be somehow transformed and, and perfected and everything's going to be good. Um, it's that even within the brokenness of our world um, that um, we can find happiness. Okay? The story of um, Purim is one that, um, like most stories in Jewish life, um, it, when when something difficult's going on, that we can find um, goodness or happiness um, in, in it, and that's the same thing as we experience when um, we break a glass at the end of a uh, of a wedding ceremony. It's kind of the opposite, all right? That um, we can find hints of sadness um, in the most joyful moments. Um, so too, it is in the midst of sadness. Whether it's because whether it's from being um, uh, going through as individuals a difficult time or this t- these times of of stress and conflict in our society, um, that we can find um, moments um, when laughter and warmth can well up inside of us that we can experience um, joy, and in doing that. Um, it spills out to others, or as we kind of started with, f- forcing ourselves, fake it till you make it, by doing those things that we're required to do, like giving gifts to the poor or food um, to others, that that joy will come back um, and uh, adhere to us. Beautiful. Now, I know that, uh, you know, one of the mitzvot on Purim is Adelo Yada, that you're supposed to drink uh, a lot to, to lighten your heart. And I know that you're a wine connoisseur. Is there a most appropriate drink for Purim this year? Well, I, I'm a great believer in um, drinking things that are particularly um, 
joy inducing and that means no man is um, <laughs> but I, I recognize that not everybody sees um, the world in the way that I do uh, I, I'm sure I will uh, find any number I, I'm sure I will I have in my own cellar any number of um, Israeli great Israeli wines um, that you can uh, you can enjoy are, are Israeli wines, are those, are, are there some good Israeli wines? Because uh, you get them from um, the you, world. Uh, we could use a whole nother session about this, but I will tell you that um, most people think uh, uh, that it's changing, but most people still think Israeli wines um, are terrible. Uh, just like in America, there are terrible uh, uh, American wines, but in Israel, the wine industry is absolutely exploding. You would not you would not believe it, um, but there are um, as many wineries in um, Israel as in Napa Valley, um, or for that wow. matter, Sonoma Valley. Um, yeah, about four hundred bonded wineries um, in all throughout the in Galilee, Israel. right? All, it, not even um, in the Galilee alone, in the Golan, in the Galilee, in the Judean hills around Jerusalem and into the Negev. There wow. are wineries in the Negev. Um, and that all of that brings me joy. That's amazing. All right. So I was going to ask you, uh, since we have to find joy, what's one thing that's going to bring you joy? But you sort of already answered that. So uh, I'll tell you that mine is uh, being here with all these kiddos over here in in our preschool, Gansana. I mean, you said it before, right? Kids just, they get joy. And, that's right. And, to be able to be surrounded by children all day is, um, and then get to go home at the end of the day, but to be able to be and, surrounded. And you know what? And, and I'll tell you, I'm going to bring yours and mine together. Okay. Because I, I do believe that happiness, um, it comes from, um, uh, is a sensory experience. Okay. And I think that when we, when we hear kids laughing, when we hear kids singing or dancing, or for that matter, when we eat good food, um, drink um, great uh, wine, um, those are those are happiness inducing uh, and ultimately joy inducing. Beautiful, beautiful. So the lesson for for this week is go be with your kids or your grandkids or your neighbor. Well, don't go with your neighbor's kids. That's not safe here. Yeah. But maybe <laughs> Zoom with your neighbor's kids and uh, get yourself a nice glass of wine. Rabbi, thank you so much for coming Thank in you. this week. And, uh, Thanks for friends, putting a smile on your face. You got it. And friends, we will see you next time on Face to Face.